but uh, I think the problem right now is um, we have to encourage general public to be vaccinated. And then secondly, make this vaccine available to uh, develop, uh, de developing countries. Um, there's a problem about the availability of these vaccines in some of the countries. So can we manage to provide these vaccines to these countries so that we can build up the herd immunity around the globe? Just think about it. If, like for example, in Hong Kong, we can manage to vaccinate all people in Hong Kong or 70 people, percent of the people in Hong Kong, and we can manage to control it inside Hong Kong. But if the disease is still become a, uh, it's a problem in other countries, in, for example, in developing countries X, the virus is still widely circulated in that country, um, eventually it will get back to Hong Kong and then will, that will affect 30% of the people in Hong Kong. So um, this is not going to be uh, a country-wide issue. It's going to be a global issue. And the vaccine availability will be a key issue um, that can help to uh, control this disease better. There's questions in terms of what happens with the technology subsequently which is developed in terms of vaccines and so forth. Um, I don't have the expertise to comment on it. Um, uh, but there's, there's an interesting debate going on currently whether, you know, you, any country who developed a vaccine should it made uh, patent free and allowed everybody to use it. So there's an interesting discussion going out and I, I'm sure it's going to go in the right direction. So I think to have fair and equitable access for the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines is really important so that we can fight this across all the countries. Um, so the head of the, the WHO, Tedros, has said that no one is safe until everyone is safe from SARS-CoV-2. Um, and the problem that we're seeing now is that local vaccine manufacturing within some countries means that those countries have priority access or if they had pre-purchase agreements during the development phase of these vaccines, they were ahead of the line as well. So in some cases, these companies or governments invested in the development of a vaccine without knowing if that vaccine was going to work. So that was a huge risk for some um, governments as well. And that's meant that those countries took the risk and helped develop a vaccine. So that's where they're then able to access it first because they um, also helped develop it. So I think without having that development and investment at the start, the vaccine might not have come to be. So I think that from both angles, I can understand why it's important to have early access in some countries because you had this um, investment that some other countries weren't able to make. And eventually it will get to those countries as well. Um, and I hope that what we're seeing now in the news is that um, countries are banding together and giving a percentage of their available vaccines to other countries as well. If you have local vaccine manufacturing within your country, you're literally able to print your own money. You're able to make your own vaccine. And I think that having local vaccine manufacturing is important in, in every continent. And being able to make some of these new vaccines is a large investment to be able to, um, to fight future viruses. So I would like to see more equitable um, distribution of vaccines, but the, the race was already sort of set by some countries by having that initial access. So I think this is something that could be significantly approved over the next few years within this year, hopefully, because otherwise it's going to take six years to vaccinate the global population. Um, and we can't be fighting this pandemic for that long. So there needs to be improvements to, to local access.